In the last class, we had seen how a half wave rectifier peak detector functions and how we can design a power supply, DC power supply using such a scheme. Let us see how this half wave rectifier or peak detector can be converted to a full wave by using a center tap transformer. This we had mentioned earlier itself, if I use a center tap transformer, when this voltage goes positive and this induces similar voltage here, this diode conducts and pumps charge into the capacitor in this direction, develops a voltage V naught in this fashion. When we have the voltage changing polarity here, this is minus, this is plus, this becomes minus, this plus. At that point of time, this diode is not conducting and we would like to have another diode put here, so that it is going to form current in the same direction, so as to replenish the charge that is now lost. Now, charge is going to be lost now only during T by 2 period as you can readily see as against T that was happening earlier with our half wave rectifier scheme. In the case of half wave rectifier, this portion of the waveform is remote and therefore, if it, the charge that is lost by the capacitor is to be replenished, it has to be done after the next positive cycle appears and therefore, it, the capacitor which is going to discharge will keep on discharging up to this point. So, the peak to peak ripple is going to be greater in the half wave rectifier situation than in the current situation where I am now going to make another diode conduct. This diode is going to conduct when this is minus plus minus plus. Therefore, it is going to replenish the charge that is already lost by the capacitor during lesser time than earlier. So, the capacitor is going to discharge now in the following fashion. It is going to charge, again discharge, charge, discharge. So, earlier it had to wait up to time t, now it has to wait only up to t by 2. So, if the discharge rate is assumed to be linear, very low because we have chosen the capacitor to be very large, if this discharge rate is very low, then we can see that the V p into, V p is the voltage here, let us say, and n is to 1, so this will become V p by n sin omega t, and this also is V p by n sin omega t center tap transformer. So, this becomes V p by n to 1 minus T by R c, this is the rate at which it is going to discharge and the time taken T for it to discharge and then this start recharging is going to be approximately equal to T by 2, not exactly equal to T by 2, it is going to be approximately equal to T by 2 this time. So, we can say that the peak to peak ripple in this case of the full wave rectifier is going to get reduced okay, by a certain extent that is V p divided by n. So, this is going to be V p by n into T by So, compare this with the result that we got earlier, these expressions remain the same except for this factor of 2 here. So, it is reduced by a factor of half. So, we can therefore use this kind of scheme for obtaining reduced ripple. The average voltage remains essentially the same. It is going to be V naught 
VDC is going to be very nearly equal to V peak divided by L. As before, there is no change in that, except that we are using center tap transformer and an additional diode in order to reduce the ripple for the same load okay, by a factor of 2. So, same scheme of full wave rectification can be done not necessarily by using a center tap transformer, by using an ordinary transformer with a turns ratio of n is to 1. This we can do by using what is called as bridge rectifier or we will call this a peak detector. Let us see how a transformer with a turns ratio equal to n is to 1 with same excitation let us say V p sin omega t here therefore, it is going to be V p by n. Now, what is going to be done by us is we use a diode and connect it to a load, but instead of completing it like this, we will put a diode here in the opposite direction, so that the circuit is complete. For the voltage which is plus here and minus here, the current is going to flow in this direction. So, instead of one diode and a resistance as earlier, we will put two diodes in series, both of which will be biased in the same direction. So, when this voltage is positive with respect to this, both the diodes will conduct now. So, the load RL is connected here and the capacitor is put as before in this manner. Now, what happens? The idea now is slightly different. When this becomes positive and this becomes negative for the next cycle, that is for the next negative half of the cycle. We want the direction of charging of the capacitor or current in the load to remain the same. So, we have to now present the diode in such a manner for this positive, the diode still conducts and therefore, it will now carry current in this direction, but voltage is presented in the reverse manner using a pair of diodes which will conduct this way. Look at it plus here, so it will conduct current in this direction go to minus this way. So, for one half of the cycle the path of current will be this, this and this. For the other half, okay, the current path is going to be this and here it is going to be same and current is going to flow in this direction. This way. So, this is the arrangement of the bridge. Therefore, instead of using a center tap transformer, we are turning the transformer voltage in the same direction by using the diode switches, which will get switched on by voltage now. Right? So, you can therefore use four diodes instead of the two diodes and no center trans transformer and get the same result. The disadvantage of this obviously is that the transformer primary cannot be grounded if you want a grounded supply, DC supply as far as the output is concerned. So, the transformer primary cannot be grounded, whereas here okay, the transformer uh, secondary is going to be grounded at the center tap. Transformer primary can be grounded anywhere you want, okay. transformer secondary cannot be grounded here. So, these two are the rectifiers which externally give you the same output voltage with the same amount of ripple. Another point to be noted as far as the difference in performance of this with that of the half wave rectifier is that the frequency of the ripple itself is going to be double the frequency of the incoming waveform. 
if the incoming waveform has 50 hertz, then the output waveform ripple has only 100 hertz as the ripple frequency. In the case of a half wave rectifier, this is going to be 50 hertz itself. So, this is double the frequency and it is reduced. So, this is the difference between a full wave rectifier and a half wave rectifier. Now, in the next session, we will work out an example of a full wave rectifier in order to design a given supply of a certain output voltage delivering a certain amount of current onto a load. Now, in order to see whether we have understood the uh, concepts involved in designing the so called power supply or battery eliminator, it is popularly called. Let us take an example. Design a 15 volts DC power supply for delivering a maximum load current, this is how it is normally given, of 100 milli amperes with a peak to peak ripple voltage of 1 volt. Peak to peak ripple voltage of 1 volt. Use full wave rectifier with center tap transformer. So, let us start solving the problem here. This is the circuit arrangement that we have to design a center tap transformer with a turns ratio n is to 1 as before okay, with two diodes connected to R L and C. It is required that we should develop a 15 volt supply here which means that the voltage here should be 15 sin omega t. So, that this peak detector gets charged to 15 volts. Whether it is full wave or half wave, it hardly matters in this aspect. So, this is going to be 15 sin omega t. This is 220 volts RMS, which means 220 volts root 2 sin omega t. So, we have here 220 volts root 2 divided by 15 as the turns ratio. 220 volts root 2 divided by n is the secondary peak voltage and that should be made equal to 15. In our design therefore, n comes out as 220 root 2 divided by 15 which is 20.74. So, we have solved one part of the design that means, that means we have to use a center tap transformer with the turns ratio of 20.74 is to 1, 20.74 is to 1. So, this is the aspect of the transformer that is taken care of. Let us now go to the other aspect. We have been told that the peak to peak ripple should be maintained at 1 volt. So, this is 1 volt and we know that peak to peak ripple in the case of a full wave rectifier which we have already worked out is V p divided by R L c into T by 2. V p is the peak voltage okay, which is 15 volts. V p by R L is the maximum current that is DC current that is likely to flow. In this particular problem, it has been given that maximum load current is 100 milli amperes with a supply of 15 volts, which means R L is such that V p by R L takes on a maximum value of 100 milli amperes. So, 100 into 10 to the power minus 3 amperes this portion is substituted here 100 into 10 to the power minus 3 that is 100 milli amperes into T by 2. T is 20 milliseconds we know 50 hertz means 20 milliseconds T by 2 is 10 milliseconds and C should be put in such a manner that this value is 1 volt. So, V p by R L is 100 milli amperes T by 2 is 10 milliseconds divided by C should become equal to 1 volt. So, from which we get the value of C as 1000 microfarads. So, these are available, these capacitors are available, but big in size and we should know the rate, rating of voltage rating of these capacitors. Rating voltage for the capacitor should be anything greater than 15 volts because it has to sustain only 15 volts across it. Any voltage greater than 15 volts can serve our purpose. Now, diode rating, this is another important thing, we, we are using capacitors, diodes and transformers. So, diode ratings, in the diode there is a rating called peak inverse voltage rating. I told you 
that a rectifier diode breaks down at a certain voltage. Okay. So, this peak inverse voltage rating in this case should be greater than 30 volts because you see here this voltage can at most become equal to 15 volts okay, in this direction as well as in the opposite direction, but this voltage remains at all times at 15 volts. So, when this becomes minus here and plus here total of reverse bias of 30 volts it has to sustain either this or this whenever the diodes are not conducting they are supposed to sustain a total voltage of 30 volts. This is the case whether it is a full wave rectifier or a half wave rectifier because in the case of half wave rectifier this portion will not be there even then this is going to reverse its polarity and this is going to be sustained at 15 volts and therefore the diode rating should be the same okay, whether it is a full wave rectifier or a half wave rectifier when we use a peak detector. Okay. So, peak inverse voltage rating should be greater than 30 volts. Next rating is very important diode current rating because most of these diodes okay, and this same current is likely to flow in the transformer also. Okay, so, the transformer also carries this DC current. Let us see how this capacitor is getting charged through the diode whenever it is getting connected to the capacitor. Right. So, let us see this waveform Vp is getting reduced linearly in the following manner Vp into 1 minus T by CRF that is the way it is falling Vp into 1 minus T by RLC. At this point where it is very nearly equal to T by 2 the value of this is given approximately by this that we have noted there earlier while finding out the peak to peak ripple. So, we know this value. So, this value is known at that particular point please remember that the diode is conducting. So, the diode is conducting capacitor is getting charged and the diode is also delivering the required DC current now okay, to the load. So, we have the DC current which we will call as I L which is the DC current and the capacitor current which we will call as this if this voltage is V at any instant of time the voltage the current through the capacitor is C D V by D T. You know this relationship where the capacitor value is C the voltage across the capacitor being V the current through the capacitor is C D V by D T. So, the average the instantaneous value of current is going to be the D C current which is actually speaking varying also slightly it is V by R L and since V is very nearly equal to V P we can assume it to be constant. So, this is going to be very nearly equal to V P by R L whereas, D V by D T keeps changing you can look at this D V by D T is highest at this point and keeps on reducing to 0 as you go by. So, the charging current of the capacitor starts with the peak value at this point and comes to 0 the moment the voltage at the input becomes less than the voltage at the output. The capacitor the diode gets disconnected and the discharge is going on like this very slowly whereas, the input voltage is falling faster. So, the moment that happens the current in the diode has become equal to 0 because the capacitor is fully charged now. So, this is the process of charging of the capacitor. So, current is going to be flowing in this circuit that is the diode circuit whenever the capacitor is getting connected to the input and it is going from a maximum to 0. We would like to know what the average value of this current is. Assuming that this is somewhat uh, triangular waveform we can say that if we know the peak C 
since it is going to 0, the average is going to be peak divided by 2. Okay? That is the average current in the diode, we can assume. So, that time interval for which the diode current is flowing, let us put it as delta t. It is made very small. Okay? So, you can imagine that the entire charge that is lost in the capacitor is replenished during this time interval, which is delta t. If the capacitor is made very large, then the discharge takes place very slowly and the charge that is lost is small, but time taken by the capacitor to replenish the charge is extremely small. So, you must have now large currents flowing in the circuit. That is why this current may become much greater than the DC current that is flowing in there. So, the diode might have to carry higher average current than the average current that is flowing in the load. So, let us investigate this. So, diode average current is going to be equal to the load current, which is almost nearly constant, plus the capacitor average current. Now, how do we determine the capacitor average current? We would like to make an approximation. We know that the charge that is lost by the capacitor is C into the voltage. So, the voltage that is lost by the capacitor is from V p to V p minus V p t by 2 R L C. So, this is the voltage that is lost, nothing but peak to peak ripple. So, C into peak to peak ripple is the charge that is lost. That has to be replenished within a time interval delta t with an average current I C average, whatever it is. So, we can get the value of I C average if we know delta t. We already know C, we already know VPP ripple. So, IC average is C into VPP ripple divided by delta T. Now, how do we, we know VPP ripple as VP into T by 2 CRL. Okay? VP into T by 2 CRL. How to find out delta T? This is also very simple if you can make approximations. This, if it is VP, and this time interval is delta t, the value here is nothing but V p cos omega delta t. Delta t when it is 0, it is V p itself, cos 0 is 1. So, this equation is that of a cosine waveform, cos, cosine omega delta t, okay, this angle into V p will give you this voltage. What is that voltage? V p into 1 minus t by 2 C r. So, we get this VP, VP getting cancelled. And therefore, delta T is going to be, delta T is equal to omega into delta, omega squared into delta T squared is equal to T divided by C R L. Right? So, let us put down these things properly. delta t into omega whole square that is going to be equal to divided by 2. This is equated to t by 2 C R L. So, this 2 gets cancelled with this 2 and you can put a root here and therefore, delta t is going to be 1 over omega of root of t divided by C R. So, this is the value of delta t, which we can substitute here. Let us uh, find out the charge equation I C average into delta t, that is the charge that is lost, was equal to C into V peak to peak ripple. So, I C average is going to be C weak peak to peak ripple divided by delta T. Now, delta T can be substituted here. So, C V peak to peak ripple, let us substitute that also, that is nothing but V P T divided by 
to C R L. That is V peak to peak ripple. And delta T itself is one over omega into root of C R L by T. So C gets cancelled here. And we get IC V average as equal to VP divided by RL. What is that equal to? It's nothing but IL itself. So VP by RL. That into omega T. What is that? Omega is equal to one over T. So omega T is equal to one, right? In fact, sorry, omega is equal to 2 pi into f. f is equal to 1 over t. So, what? f is equal to 1 over t. So, we get here this getting cancelled. So, we get this as I L into pi root of C R L by T. So this gives you clearly the fact that if you want the ripple to be very small, you will make C R L very large compared to T. This is what we have made. Ripple has to be very small. So T has to be made that is CRL has to be made very large compared to T. That means this factor is a huge factor. So you can see here that the average, IC average is going to be a huge factor into pi into IL. So it is much greater than IL itself. So this is a thing that you have to remember in designing a circuit like this. That means what is going to be the current through the diode? current through the diode now is going to be I diode average is going to be I L plus I C average. This is an important equation, design equation that you have to remember. And in our case, IL is going to be 100 milliamperes. So this is 100. Plus 100 milliamperes into pi into C into RL. Now already we have chosen this. Uh, we already know this uh, C as 1000 microfarad RL is nothing but 15 volts divided by 100 milliamperes which is nothing but 15 volts divided by 100 milliamperes I think I'll redo this here so that it is not mixing with this plus 100 milliamperes into phi into in fact you can get c r l divided by t from this expression directly instead of because we know peak to peak ripple is nothing but v p into t by 2 to c r l this is known to us. This is given as 1 volt. Okay. We want to know the value of C R L by T, T by C R L. So we can just obtain this by this expression that C R L by T therefore is equal to directly from this information is nothing but uh, 1 volt C R L by T goes there, V P by 2 that is 7.5 volts 
divided by 1 volt simply is this clear instead of substituting the calculated values from the given values you can get up directly obtain c r l by t in the following manner v p to peak ripple is given as v p by 2 into t by c r l that is given as equal to 1 volt. So, c r l by t is nothing but v p by 2 divided by 1 7.5. So, we have this here as 7.5. So, will somebody calculate this and tell me what this is this factor of pi into root of 7.5 pi into root of 7.5 is the factor by which the load current is going to be multiplied. That is the excess current, average current that is going to flow through the diode as well as the transformer. So, please remember that this is much greater than the load current. So, continuing with our earlier discussion about the capacitive current. We have seen once again that V p cos omega delta t, this is the time interval delta t, this is the cos waveform is equal to V p into 1 minus t by 2 C R L, this is the waveform. Okay. At this point, the value is V p into 1 minus t by 2. That can be approximated as cos theta is 1 minus theta squared by 2, this approximation you know. So, 1 minus omega delta t squared by 2. V p V p getting cancelled, this is 1 minus t by 2 C R L. So, omega delta t squared is t by C R L. So, delta t is 1 over omega into root of t by C R L. So, I C average the capacitive current into delta t the charge replenished is equal to C into charge lost C into V p peak to peak ripple. So, this is equal to C into V p by 2 V p by 2 into T by C R L. I C average therefore is equal to C by 2 V P by C R L into T to 1 by delta T. So, if you substitute these two get cancelled and omega into T is equal to 2 pi. So, this two get cancelled. So, ultimately we see that I C average is V P by R L which is I L into pi into root of C R L by T that is what we got and that factor for this problem comes out to be how much? 8.6 times I L. This is I C average and I diode average is therefore equal to I L plus 8.6 times I L or 9.6 times 100 milliamperes or equal to 960 milliamperes. That is the average current that the capacitor uh, that is the diode gets because of the additional charging current due to the capacitor. So, 960 milliamperes is the average repetitive current. This is going to happen whenever the diodes conduct repetitively after every t by 2 time interval. So, this is the repetitive current rating please remember. Average current in the whole circuit is 100 milliamperes. Right? So, this is the repetitive current because it is going to be a pulsed okay, average current. Now, if we assume that this delta t interval is very small and this is going to be dropping fairly linearly and this is a triangular wave form, then the peak current, peak current I, as I told you occurs at this point when the capacitor is just starting to charge. So, that peak current that is going to flow through the diode is going to be the I L that is plus average is going to be 8.6 times I L. Therefore, the peak is going to be twice this. So, that it is going from peak to 0 here. So, the capacitive average current is going to be half of the peak. If you make that assumption, 
this is going to be 2 times 8.6 times i star. So, this is going to be 17.2 plus 1 18.2 times i star, which is 1.82 amperes. So, that is the kind of rating that you should have for the diode. This is a peak repetitive current rating for the diode, which is also going to be mentioned in your uh, specification for the diode. It should be one greater than 1.82 amperes for the diode. Peak repetitive current rating for the diode. should be greater than this value. The average current should be greater than about 1 ampere this is for a load current of 100 milliampere. So, these ratings are very important and you can see that for a reasonable design where these are the ripple is going to be extremely small all these approximations are perfectly valid and therefore, for a design these uh, equations can be taken and therefore, you can come out with a very good design for a power supply that will work satisfactorily for you. Now, there are certain other points which I have to mention for completion sake. There is what is called as a surge current rating. Whenever you connect this rectifiers etcetera, since you are putting a capacitor there there is what is going to be called a surge current rating. Let us say this is the suppose you are now talking of a situation where this is getting a power supply connected. So, the voltage here is going to suddenly change to some value may be up to the peak value which is 220 into root 2 at the time of switching on the voltage can be any value it can be 0 also in which case the surge is not occurring, but you cannot switch on exactly at that point we do not know. And therefore, this is what happens even in when you switch on uh, your ordinary switches in your home the bulb suddenly gets fused only when you switch on sometimes it happens why because you at the time of switching on you might be having a voltage which is almost reaching the peak. If it is going through 0, there is no surge current and therefore, this surge current now is caused by a sudden switching on of a voltage here and that voltage can be anywhere up to the peak. Then that voltage will induce a voltage here which is going to peak divided by R there and that voltage is going to be directly shorted by the capacitor because for a sudden change in voltage all the current will flow through the capacitor, capacitor will act as a short circuit. So, there is no limitation of current here, it can only occur if the capacitor is non ideal, if the diode is non ideal and if the transformer is non ideal. This non ideality saves your circuit for that matter saves your diode. If the di transformer is ideal there is no resistance in the transformer. If the diode is ideal, then the capacitor is ideal, the surge current is going to be infinity. At t equal to 0, this is a short, this is an ideal transformer and therefore, there is no resistance at all in this circuit. So, the voltage is suddenly changing across the capacitor, infinite current should flow. So, it is good that most of our capacitors are non ideal and there will be a series resistance associated with the capacitor. Please remember apart from series resistance there will be also a leakage resistance across. The leakage resistance does not save the thing, but the series resistance of the capacitor saves the diode. Not only that the series resistance associated with the diode will also come 
then the series resistance associated with the transformer winding. So, all these resistances put together, let us say we call it R s. It will be including the series resistance of the transformer, the diode series resistance and the capacitor series resistance. And therefore, whatever voltage to which surge occurs, let us say V p by n divided by R s is the surge current rating, right? R s. R l does not come into picture at all, R l is this. So, this R s is what comes into picture that will be the sort of current that will flow through the diode and the capacitor. So, the diode surge current rating should be such that it is higher than this. If we say that this is V p by n is uh, 15 volts in our case, maximum worst case. So, suddenly there may be a surge of 15 volts across the secondary. So, 15 volts divided by let us say uh, 1 ohms, even if it is 1 ohm, 15 ampere. Right? If it is a good circuit, it may be 0.1 ohm. Okay? And then you see 150 ampere is the rating, surge current rating. And this sometimes might be the culprit in spoiling the circuit. Okay? You do not have any apparent reason, but the circuit simply, the diode gets spoiled because of the fact that you have not bothered about surge current rating and you have done a very good design okay, wherein you have kept the transformer losses to the minimum and the transformer resistance is low, good diodes you have chosen, good capacitor you have put, all good for your performance there. Right? If there is a series resistance in series with the capacitor, then the ripple will be further increase because apart from the capacitive current which is C dV by dt, okay, there will be this voltage which is I into R which is dropping across this. So, that current will also cause a voltage. So, this resistance has to be necessarily kept very small okay, in order to reduce the ripple and the transformer resistance is also going to be kept very low for good okay, circuit design. Therefore, the surge current rating, please remember, must be borne in mind before finalizing the design of a power supply. Now, as far as uh, the transformer is concerned, you should also remember that the transformer winding, okay, the copper winding that you have to have here will also depend upon the current rating, etcetera that it is supposed to carry. Okay. So, this rating is going to be common for both diode as well as the secondary of the transformer. Because there is a turns ratio, the current up to which this has to work is going to be I mean, in sort of uh, different from this in terms of the turns ratio, we lower. Okay. Uh, the current here is, the voltage is lower on this side and therefore current is higher, the current is lower and voltage is higher on this side. So, this completes our discussion about how to design a good battery eliminator or power supply using AC input, whatever it be. Now, for you to gain further experience in designing power supplies, we will give a problem for you to work out on similar lines that we have done in example, just the previous example. Design a power supply of 15 volts DC for delivering, now I am indicating the load in a different fashion, a maximum power of 1.5 watts. We know that it is 15 volts DC and power is 1.5 watts, so you know the current. 15 volts DC into I this L max corresponds to 1.5. Okay, you can conclude about the current. With 10 percent ripple, instead of saying peak to peak ripple of 1 volt, here I am giving the way ripple can be given, 10 percent ripple, 10 percent compared to the output voltage. That means, 1 point 15 volts divided by 10, 1.5 volts peak to peak ripple. 
So this is peak to peak. Whenever it is not mentioned, you must assume that it is peak to peak. Otherwise, ripple can also be indicated in terms of RMS value. Okay, using a bridge rectifier now, instead of using the center tap transformer as we have done in the last design, I would like you to work out the same problem using a bridge rectifier. That means instead of using center tap transformer, you will use an ordinary transformer with the terms ratio n corresponding to the same value as got in the earlier problem because output voltage is same 15 volts. So, n remains the same, but there is no center tap here, but instead you will be using four diodes and obtaining the DC voltage. So, the turns ratio remains the same as the last class turns ratio. Now, as far as ripple is concerned, it is slightly different. Huh? Earlier it was 1 volt ripple for which you have to design. Here it is 10 percent, that means 1.5 volts ripple. Okay? That means capacitor is going to be smaller right, than the earlier situation bridge rectifier. Okay. So, please remember that this arrangement you have to now give the specification for the diode, capacitor and the transformer, most of which we have already done okay. and you have to uh, go about doing it in a similar fashion as we have done. The peak repetitive ratings for the diode, all these things okay, you have to recalculate based on the new. So, in the next class, we will discuss more about other applications of the diode.